Hi, my name is David Poland, and uh, I'd like to welcome you to the second season of Portland Film Beat. My first guest for the year of 2015 is Rochelle Henry. She has over 27 IMDb credits. She's been in multiple plays and at least six commercials. Welcome aboard, Rochelle. Hi, how are you doing? <laughs> um, what first got you interested in acting? Well, it's kind of funny. Um, when I was six years old, I went to a cheerleading camp, and these um, girls, they were cousins, they said, well, Nickelodeon is having auditions for girls that do cheerleading. And so I told my family, and they, and I, they were like, oh, yeah, okay. Because um, they didn't want to be the one that, you know, like, you know, forced, forced you? it. Yeah, because yeah. they, be they wanted it to be my decision, you know, yeah. of course. And so then the day of the audition, um, I asked my grandma, so what are we going to do today? And she said, well, we could go to the zoo, the aquarium. And then I said, but don't I have an audition today? <laughs> and they, at the audition, they said to me, you're going to have to work very hard for many years. And I said, yes, please. Really? <laughs> yeah. How old were you? Six. Is that right? Mm hmm Yeah. So you've I been was... doing this for quite a few years. Yeah. Yeah, That's more exciting. than half my life. <laughs> is that right? That's exciting. And your grandmother is your, she, without her. Oh, my gosh. She's my manager. She is beyond amazing. I right. love her to death. And your grandfather, And my grandpa, too. he is, um, like, the chauffeur and the businessman and, <laughs> um, and my mom does stuff too, and right. you know, well, even know my gotta... dog is like the cute, like you know, you know how every celebrity has their you know famous pet. Like he's like my version of that. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, but you've got this great support crew, and I, it's I really awesome. Do. You know, and you're real comfortable in your skin. I really like to see that. Thank you. Um, where have you trained? Tell us some of your training you've had. I have had, wow, I've had so much training over the years. Um, my. Uh, private acting coach is John Jacobson. He's in Seattle. Um, mm -hmm. He's a really great mentor and coach. And then also Mighty Tripod Productions in Seattle. Um, Angela DeMarco and David S. Hogan, they are amazing. Mm -hmm. um, I love taking classes from them. Um, Give a plug for your agent in Seattle and the one here in, in, in Portland. Okay. Go ahead, tell them oh. who they are. Okay. So my agent in Seattle is um, Melissa um, Baldoff at um, TCM, Models and Talent. And then my agent in Portland is Dennis Troutman of Option Model and Media. So he does a great job, yeah, too. Yeah, they both do um, really great. Anyway, I, I'd like to mention right now that she actually is from Seattle, but she's in Portland a lot. She works in both cities a lot. I think they're going to give her dual citizenship soon. It's, it's going <laughs> to have to happen, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean... <laughs> I mean, at one point at time, about training still, I went down um, to do Katie O'Grady Fields' class. We used to go to Portland Film Actors and, Studio. Yes, and I would go down, you know, once a week, twice a week. Mm -hmm. um, I went down all the time. Right. You know, Portland You've is got like a nice grandfather, home. I'm telling you. Yeah, yeah. They, they both, you know, sometimes, yeah. sometimes Grandpa isn't able to drive me, and Grandma does it, and we always have a great time. That's whenever. good. That's really We're good. We're always so happy doing it yeah. all together as a group. Right. As a matter of fact, uh, Rochelle and I have been in a film together. Yeah. And um, actually, we've also shot a number of scenes together at the Portland Film Actors Studio. I met her like three years ago doing that. Yeah, yeah. We just had a lot of great time. Tell us about your first audition. Oh. Well, you did tell us about it. With the, there was Nickelodeon. What well, was your first audition that actually, it, well, if you can remember, that got you a part in something, oh. anything? Mm, I don't remember. I mean. Do you remember your audition for Oliver? I do remember my audition for Oliver. Um, so in 2011, I was 10, <laughs> have to do the math. Um, I auditioned um, for 12th Night Productions. They're a company in West Seattle. Um, they are amazing. I've worked with them three times and I love them so much. They're like a little family. And um, I went in and I auditioned because some friends had told me <laughs> about them because they had worked with them once before and they were considering auditioning. They didn't actually do it. So it's kind of funny. You know, the whole reason I went was to be, you know, maybe doing it with them. And <laughs> I go in and they hand me sides and I love Oliver Twist. I know this book by heart. You got Oliver the part of Oliver, didn't you? <laughs> yes. I go in and they give me um, sides for a girl and so I, you know, look at those for a little bit, you know, I'm like, okay, this will be a cold read. And I go in and they say, no, you're supposed to audition for Oliver. And I'm like, really? 
I mean, I was assuming they were gonna, you know, do a boy, but you know, for age re age reasons, all the boys' voice were changing, and it's they didn't want that because you could sing happen. and dance, probably too, right? Yeah, uh -huh. and so then it was a really, really cold, cold read, and I got, I got a call back, and then I got it, and that mm -hmm. was really amazing. It's one of the most important productions I've ever done, Is that personally, right? and you know, mm -hmm. professionally, I really. So I'm you do older. sing and dance? Yes, I do. Tell us the different dances that you've done or do. I have done ballet, tap, jazz, hip hop, and lyrical, but my favorite is tap. Okay, great. You told us about, uh, tell us about your worst audition. I know you've got to have had a really bad one. <laughs> I've had multiple. I mean, to be honest, I mean, like, we've all had our bad auditions, you know. It's all happened. And, one of my auditions, I it was down here in Portland, and they said, do a little bit of basketball. I guess I assumed in my genes, since my grandfather had done basketball, that maybe I was going to be able to dribble a <laughs> ball decently. No. In the audition room, they wanted me to dribble it back and forth for like five minutes, and it kept going away from me, and they wanted me to say stuff while doing it. And when I left, I was flushing red I'm just thinking oh my gosh I just failed right so you had a hard you know? enough time dribbling the basketball besides having to say lines on top of that uh, yeah <laughs> they like like I was supposed to say this is so much fun I love doing this and you're like this is so bad I don't know how to dribble a ball <laughs> oh my gosh what's another bad audition if you can remember uh, um was when, that for a commercial yes it was okay um I remember one um, when I was about 12, I was going in and a friend recommended this to me. I don't think he knew my age that, at that time. And it was supposed to be like, let's say, I think it was like a 17 year old that wants to go to a club and like a 21 plus club. And it oh, had, really? <laughs> oh my gosh, I didn't know what it was about until I go in. And it had, I had to say stuff like in the lines you know, stuff that it was beyond, you know, cussing and, you know, inappropriate comments. It was so much, like, 10 pages worth, and they wanted me to read everything, and, like, three times through. And at one point, I just stopped, and I said, I can't read these lines. I'm sorry. I can't really? read these. Well, good for you. I mean... It was just way too... I mean, I was yeah. also... I don't I think, think you'd have, age, have an easy time at this I stage. Mean, it just at doesn't this seem age, like I wouldn't. Personal. I mean, personally, I would, you know, be thinking, man, this is not me. But I would probably, you know, go, this is not me. This is the character. I can do this. Okay. But Good for you. Back then, I didn't feel like I could say it even if it was the character. Right. You know? well, no, you felt uncomfortable with you. Yeah. So yeah. what's the, uh, I take it that Oliver was your favorite character that you played? I, Outside of Oliver, who's the favorite character you uh, played? I don't know. I mean, they're all my babies. I mean, you know, you. it's like. A rock and a hard place, which is we'll your favorite. Right, we'll, we'll talk about that after the reel <laughs> because we've got a bunch of stuff on there. Yeah, now, yeah. How do you prepare for a role? I mean, it's honestly different with every character. Um, I mean, this is stuff Meryl Streep says. She says it's honestly, it's never the same. You know, because, I mean, you try to, you know, write down, you know, what's their motivation, what's their beats, but also you don't want it to be so overthought that you're not going to seem natural, that you're not going to be real and have authentic moments. Okay. I try to, you know, mix different things I've learned over the years, you know, to get that authentic yet, you know, because I don't want, even if I am doing it, like if I'm, if I didn't prepare at all, I may not get any kind of character yeah, or emotion out yeah, of it. Yeah, everybody talks about don't do anything. I don't agree with that. I think there has to be something going on. I there. think I, I think that some people do it too much and some people do it too little. I think there is a happy medium and a balance that you have to have. It's a you. little formula, you know? Right. You have to have it. And like I said, it's different with every character. So how is it different for you for film, commercials, and, dirt, and stage? What's the difference? Well, for you, there's got to be something. It, it, I mean, that might be a tough question, actually. It is, um, because it's like with preparing for characters, it's always different, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it's always a different, you know, story, different circumstances, different people you're working with. Um, but I would say 
well, there's a casting director in Spokane, Washington, named Nikea Moro. She is amazing. I love her. And she says um, that film is more intimate and theater is more promiscuous and broad. I really love when she said yeah. that. I'm like, this makes sense. Mm -hmm. You are, you know, film is right there. It's just you and the character or just the camera. You know, it's just you having a real conversation. Theater, you have to project and show more mm -hmm. than you probably would if you were, you know, in a real life scenario. Because yeah. you have to go, my name is Rochelle Henry. <laughs> as opposed to, my name is Rochelle Henry. You know? Right. And commercial, mm -hmm. I, I mean, it depends on what kind of commercial. I mean, if it's, you know. Bubbly. A lot of them are supposed to be yeah, happy, Yeah, I mean, joyful. if it's a depression a commercial, commercial, you're obviously night. not going to be like, hi, I'm going to sell you this antidepressant. You know, it's it's going to be That's different. That's depressing. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, yeah. But if you're doing, like, a happy, you know, like, Christmas thing, it's gonna be bubbly, energetic, right. smiling mm -hmm. more than you know an average human would going to a store. You're like, I'm gonna go and buy some gifts. Right. Okay. Have you ever done any bad acting? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, yes, of course. Um, and there's always, I always think that it's a struggle with every actor to not, I mean, I've heard this saying multiple times, you don't wanna show that you're caught dead acting. Right. You want to not seem like you're acting. And I I went to a movie recently um, and I saw acting um, and I'm like, really? You were surprised by it. I was, and I, I was really surprised by it. I, And then I went and I saw two amazing films, um, The Theory of Everything, Eddie Redmayne, he did a really great oh, I job. Watched it. That yeah. was a beautiful film. And he then, became Stephen Hawkins, if you ask me. I mean, he totally went into that character full on. And then my favorite um, one that I went and saw was The Imitation Game with Benedict Cumberbatch. I'm going to watch that too. Oh my gosh. I read what it's about um, a while before the movie came out, and I, I cried a lot through the film. Is that Honestly, right? it was so beautiful. <laughs> he should win an Oscar for that. It right. was. Well, they're coming up soon. Yeah. Um, but I did not see acting in either performance, right. which was great. And I always, when I watch my st films, I mean, some actors, they don't want to watch, you know, their own work because, you know, they right. feel I like, like to watch my own work. I mean, you always get jitters in your stomach when you're about to watch it because you're like, I hope it doesn't look bad. But the thing about watching it is that then you know what not to do you next learn time. From it. And I you can agree see, you oh, no, there was a bad moment. Right. Here, I'm going to go fix that right now. <laughs> do you ever feel like giving up? Nope. No? Good for Simple you. answer, no. <laughs> really? Yeah, I mean, okay. it's true. In the past, have you ever? No. Really? Good for you. <laughs> then you're going to make it because you Thank just you. won't give up. What is your favorite part of filmmaking? Ah, uh, I mean, there's so much, so, so much. I think that, you know, going in and, you know, building relationships and working with people. Right. Because, um, you know, every job, on a film matters. You need the catering guy. You need the boom person. You need the hair and the makeup mm -hmm. and you need the AD. You need everyone. You need the people that drive you back and forth from set. You know, you need right. everyone and you couldn't make the film without every single person. Right. So I feel like, you know, and you start to become a family if you work together long enough right. and you've known each other long enough. It becomes this little like, hey, like unthinkable hey, we're an unthinkable family. It was, yeah, it was a family. We had a lot of fun on yeah, that. Yeah, that was really, really fun. We had a lot of fun. <clears throat> Actually, right now, we're going to take about a minute, minute and a half, and we're going to watch her short reel. We'll be right back. <gasps> That's me. That's your mom. No, but it's me. We're creating a fear hierarchy, right? Immersion therapy is so retro, Mr. Cooper. I really thought so much more of you. What are you doing? Gordon! Hey, hey. Gordon, please don't leave me! Hey, hey. Please, hey, hey. please, please let me go. Shut up! Shut up and sit down! Let my mom cough, you monster! Stay back. You know who I am. Oh, that was a lot of fun. That, that was, was really, really awesome. great. 
So anyway, <clears throat> the first thing was creation. And actually, I had, uh, what was her name? Christy Kimball. Christy Kimball on the <laughs> show, and we actually talked about creation, and you were in the trailer on here. So tell us, what did you, how, we're going to talk about each part, because there was creation, <laughs> caged, not a prayer, the perfect pieces, and the five archers. Um, I don't know what to even start with those. Tell us about each one of those. Creation, so, start with creation. Okay. Yeah, we can go just down the list. Um, creation, um, Kristen Kimball, it's, um, she's the director and writer. It's um, a really beautiful fantasy feature. We just did a proof of concept. We shot it on the Oregon coast for um, four days and I think nice. a few pickups. Mm -hmm. um, but it's about this girl um, who has been raised by her grandparents because her mom died when she was mm -hmm. two or three. And her uncle, um, they have kind of, they look like they can be father and daughter. And he takes her to go see her mom's grave for the first time okay. when she's about 12 or 13. Right. And they go into this magical world. And it is magical. It is the really. The filming was amazing. It was. Nathan Coltrane and Michael Greenman, they did a great job right. on that. I right. loved working with them and seeing all their you know, cool shots. Caged. The makeup in that, your dark hair, the thick eyebrows, <laughs> and the thick underline eye makeup. <laughs> so I really liked that because I've never seen that part of you. Yeah. I mean, it was a darker character, kind of, uh, I think, angry. Angry, yeah. I mean, she is very, um, I mean, I imagine that she was horribly bullied in that school, and she's very scarred from it. Okay. Um, so, compliments to my grandma for doing the goth makeup. We tried to get someone to do the makeup, and nobody could do it for us. So, she and I, we went to this Walmart, and these ladies helped us out. Um, one was... Um, like just a 60 year old lady and then the other was actually a goth lady and so they worked together to grab us <laughs> all these products night. and they were both very very nice it was like the best customer service you could ever have actually and right. so, so let's move on we yeah. want to get lost up in there tell us about not a prayer so that's actually um, a piece from a feature called west of centerville and um, <laughs> So this is like the most dramatic scene in the whole feature. Right. Um, it's it 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 doesn't show like completely what the story is about, but it's the main villain, the best friend, and the lead girl all in this really weird scenario. Um, the girl, her best friend. His dad's a religious zealot, and he decides that he's going to forcefully baptize her. Oh, is that where it's going? Yes, okay. that's that's where it's going in it, and it's that's not a prayer. I kind of get it now. All right, mm -hmm. the perfect pieces. That was for um, Kirk Nordstrom. He runs the Seattle's Forty Eight Hour Film Project, and is that what that was? For? Yeah, it and seems good though. Well, it was actually for um, the Four Points Film Project, which the people that made the Forty Eight Hour um, created, and so it's where all the you know local producers of it get to compete and I was lucky enough to be cast with um, Angela DeMarco and David Hogan and um, uh, Paul Einhorn and um, Madeline Nutting and what oh, what's his name I feel guilty uh, but okay cut that out but um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know I had to play you know this goth girl again um, and it it was very fun. It's one of the most fun times I've ever had on set. Because you were a lot of friends and people you knew, right? Yeah, and we were all just laughing so hard at, there was random moments in um, our um, in our script. It was like... Did you have to improv when you did that? There was a lot of improv, okay. and a lot of it was cut down, but we all think that there should be an hour or two hour <laughs> long... Um, you know, blooper reel. Like, really? Okay. We would all watch it. Tell us about the five archers. Were so, there five of you? <laughs> well, um, kind of at one point. Um, there's a lot of us, actually. Uh, my friend Douglas Herring, he is creating this story, um, and he was developing it over the summer. He's, um, it was a bit of like a proof of concept and testing it out because okay. he wants to actually do it, you know, next summer. And uh, I play Clarissa 
first archer to the queen. She's also the queen's niece. Yeah. And she is sassy, spunky, medieval Katniss, I would say. Oh, yeah. Cool. <laughs> what is your favorite film? Oh, this kills me. I don't know. I mean, honestly, I mean, okay. I love all the genres. Okay, so. I get it. So tell us, what film has you, uh, have you drawn more, a lot of inspiration from? Well, recently, The Imitation Game. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> recently, that one, um, I'm a big history nut, and that one I loved. And the the horror and sadness and pain and all of it was, Is that right? and the love and hope in it all mm -hmm. combined together was just really good. So you great. like all genres of film. But which one are you drawn to the most? Uh, I like, um, I like dramas. Um, Sir, uh, a few biopics I really like, like The King's Speech is a favorite, um, and I like thrillers. Um, I'm starting to like sci-fi a lot right now. Yeah, but there's yeah. some really great sci-fi films. Yeah, I just saw Guardians of the Galaxy. Dance off, bro, you and me. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, you had a I lot love of fun with it. Okay. Yeah, that fun, that film was fun. Okay, what director, A-list director? I know there's a lot in that Portland, and Seattle area, but what A-list director would you like to work with? Oh man. Um, Spielberg? Is that right? <laughs> Why not? I mean, I loved Lincoln. I love all of his films, really. He does a great job. A lot he, of people, really does. you know, said some bad things about him, but I think as Aww. far as a filmmaker, he does a great job. It's, he knows how to use a camera, he, that's he for really sure. He really does. Um, he, he knows how to move the camera, when to move it, and it, you don't even notice what's going on. It, it yeah. just affects you. So. And there's millions of others mm -hmm. that I would love to work with, too. How is the Portland market different than the Seattle market? Is there a difference? Can you see it? Feel it? There is. Um, Portland has a bigger film incentive than Seattle, sadly. Uh, I mean, personally, as a Seattle girl. <laughs> that's but okay. that's why we Seattle people commute down to Portland. We're like, you guys have TV shows. We don't. Well, lately we've been getting some, but we've been commuting. Um, but I think that Portland and Seattle need to work together because together we're like a small little army yeah. against you know LA or Vancouver or New York you know we, it's good we that you put work it that together way. if we work together because I don't think it should be a competition between us I don't I think, think there if is, we really. work together um, which I don't feel it is but I feel like if we really become a really tight-knit Pacific Northwest community as opposed to saying Seattle and Portland just say the Pacific Northwest we could really become a strong market. I'm glad I to think. hear you champion that. <laughs> That's really good that you did that. Um, go Pacific Northwest. Go for the Northwest. Who is your favorite A-list actor? And then again, who's your favorite A-list actress? Would you want to work with them and why? Oh. That's a lot of questions wrapped into one, I know. <laughs> I have so many. Um, well, I can name a few. Meryl Streep, Benedict Cumberbatch, uh, Judy Dench, Dame Maggie Smith, okay, Ian right, McClellan, so. Brian Cranston, Aaron Paul. Okay, if you could choose one actress to work with. Meryl Streep. Okay, one actor. Benedict Cumberbatch. Okay, there you go. Well, <laughs> and that'll change next week. <laughs> I mean, right? I've always, you know, and also there's so many actors on TV shows, I don't know their names, but I'm like, I love you. I love you. You're mm -hmm. amazing. Where do you hope to see yourself in five years? Oh, man. I, because I, you, you know, Film is always changing. Um, the world is always changing. Film is always changing. I don't know. I want to see myself as six, as my own view of success. Mm -hmm. um, Good for you. I, I mean, even if it's not some other people's success, I mean, being able to make a living and be happy with my job, even if I'm not a billionaire with, you know, you know going on the red carpet every day, I, I mean, because fame isn't my goal. It's Good the art you. and the craft. Mm -hmm. I just think that if I'm able to make a living at it, I mean, even if I have to, like, teach or, you know, direct some, if if I'm in the film business, I'm happy. You're a success. Yeah. You know, my mother said to me years ago, you don't measure success from where you are, but from where you started. And if you're going to be happy, you know, a lot of people are like, oh, no, I want to win the Oscar. Oh, I've got to be on the red carpet. You know, that's, is that really your goal? And what I like to hear from you is it's it's doing the work. Yeah, it is. And you know what? That is, if you can do that, that is a success, and and that's going to be extremely yes. rewarding. Yes. At the end you. of the day, if you can make someone laugh or cry mm -hmm. or at least feel something, carry a message to mm -hmm. them, 
you did your job, mm -hmm. you know. <clears throat> so you've obviously, from where you started to where you are, you're having a happy time. You've been in 27, you got 27 IMDb credits. Plus or so many others, you know, that aren't on IMDb. And All right, so here's the resume, question. You can only list so much. If you had any advice to give to someone younger than you or your age and wants to get started in acting, what would you say to them? I would say that you need to start taking um, some classes. Um, Portland has a lot of on-screen acting classes for kids, um, you know, Katie O'Grady Field and Sandra Peabody, and I know there's some other great ones that I haven't met, but I know mm -hmm. that they're down here. Um, and if there's theater, um, I'm not sure what theater is down here, but I bet there's a good theater program. Oh, there's Children's Theater, there's the Oregon Children's Theater, there's mm -hmm. North, uh, Northwest Children's Theater, there's a couple. And adults, um, you know, there's, you know, Jan Lee Hamblin and, um, and uh, Scott Rogers, Scott Rogers, Ted Rooney. And Ted Rooney. And actually, yeah. I would recommend Barry Hunt. Oh, really? I haven't met him. Oh, I should introduce you. Okay, so what's next for you? I am doing some. Uh, I have a web series that I'm going to be shooting soon, really? and okay. I have a few other films that are in the process. You just got done last night shooting a commercial. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, that was that was really fun. Mm. I had fun doing that. Okay. And I have a few music videos that are be coming out. And right. Yeah, so I'm really excited. You know what? It's been a pleasure. It's been a lot of fun. But thank we're running so out of much. time here at Portland oh. Film Beat. I want to thank you for joining us. I want to thank Rochelle for being here. I want to thank Christo and Krista, who work at the studio and help set this up. I want to thank uh, Ellery Nelson, Phil and Sue Holmes. Ellery's our director. Phil and Sue are our assistant directors. I want to thank my producer, who's my wife. She does a great job and helps me through everything. Her name is Carol, and I want to thank you. And until next time, on Portland Film Beat, shoot for the silver screen. <laughs>